Hello and welcome back. I'm Matt, and for the three of you that are following me, thank you. It's double that number, huh? All right. So today I'm talking about the Nikon FA. Absolutely amazing, incredible, just a dream to shoot SLR. Unbelievable camera. I found this online. Actually, it wasn't, well, it was online. It was for a local estate sale and they had their, all their auctions is all online. So you get to go look at it one day and then you have like three weeks to go through and do the bidding and stuff. I personally don't prefer that. I prefer to go in the morning of an estate sale and find it and just grab it and buy it or decide that I don't want it instead of waiting three weeks to know if I'm gonna win it or not. Anyhow, I got it on the low low. I mean, I got this thing dirt cheap. I mean, extremely cheap. And I am super happy with it. It came with pretty much what you see here with the 28 F 3.5, or is it 3.8? Yeah, 3.5. Uh, the Nikkor 3.5 uh, actually came with a UV lens on it, whatever. Came with a leather case, but the leather case was kind of falling apart, and I really don't like those leather cases anyhow. But I'm glad that this was always stored in a leather case because it looks pristine. Um, only bit of cosmetic damage I can see is about right there in the winding. I will say though, when you see these that are well used and the edges are all kind of just worn down and you can see the brass coming through, oh, those look amazing. So I also got a Hoya, 135 millimeter f 2.8. Uh, this is an AI lens where this, the, the 28 millimeter is an AIS. So it just works a little bit better with the, with the FA. This one works too, but honestly, I, I'm not crazy about 135 millimeter. You know, I, I really like the 28 millimeters, the 35 millimeters up to about 50 millimeters. And that's kind of about it for, for me when it comes to lenses. Um, I never really messed with long lenses, but uh, this is the first time for everything, right? So yeah, um, I purchased this with the sole reason of reselling it. I've never, ever, ever used a Nikon product before other than a Coolpix little Digicam. That's it. It's the only Nikon experience I've ever had. Um, I've always researched Nikons. I've always liked how they looked. I just wasn't crazy about, um, I would say, their video abilities when it comes to modern cameras. I would say that they just, they just, they didn't do anything for me. None of them did. Not like the Fujis. The Fujis really do it for me. Um, Canon, I, I started with, but we're just gonna we're gonna stick a pin in that one. Um, and then uh, Lumix, Panasonic Lumix. I, I really love my Lumixes. Uh, I, I think Lumix does a fantastic job. It's just their sensor size is a little too small, and I kind of liked the the Fujis features. Anyway. We're gonna push all that aside because that's for another day. Today is all about the Nikon. And after I shot this, I would say probably after about, I don't know, two frames of shooting this, I realized I'm keeping it. It's not gonna be sold. I mean, it's, it's gonna be mine. This is not going anywhere but into my camera bag and it's gonna be my primary shooter, period. Right then and there, two, it's all took two photos and I knew immediately that this was mine and it was gonna stay mine for a long time. And I'm probably gonna get rid of some other stuff and maybe buy another another different model of this, you know? But anyway, this is probably, from what I read, this is probably one of the most advanced, um, fully mechanical, fully manual cameras that's ever been made. And it shows. I mean, it has a lot of features built into this that just works beautifully. I mean, in harmony with one another. I mean, one four thousandth of a speed shutter on a film camera that's mechanical. Mm, wow. Crazy. Um, now, it, this does take a battery and pretty much it needs a battery to work. But it does have a full manual option. It has a Oh, here, I'll show you. 
so starting from the top, program mode, which is pretty much automatic, uh, other than your focusing. You have shutter priority, which is you set your shutter, or you set your shutter here, and it's gonna display and tell you what you need to change your uh, aperture to. Then you have aperture priority, where you set the aperture that you want, and then the exposure meter inside your viewfinder is going to tell you where to change your shutter speeds. And then you have full manual, which you pretty much have full control over everything, every aspect of it. Um, yeah, the metering on this is spot on and incredible. Uh, there's some really nice features with that. Uh, it actually shows you if there's a LED display um, at the top of, well, it would be for me, it'd be top left. So you're looking at me, so it would show up like up here. If you're looking, if pretending you're looking through a viewfinder right now, it would show up right up here. And then on top of that, it actually has a little bit of a cool feature. Um, with an AIS lens, you have right here, there is a little opening. It's actually a little little lens that, and prism that goes into uh, the upper part of your viewfinder. And it reads the small aperture numbers on the bottom. And it that way, when you're looking through your viewfinder, you can adjust your aperture, and it's going to show you what your aperture is. Very cool feature. I mean, very simple, cool feature. It's like, damn, way to go, Nikon. I mean, I never would have thought of it just because I've never been a huge Nikon fan um, in the past, but I definitely am now. And here's my favorite part. This is absolutely my favorite part. The film advanced lever is so smooth it's so amazing it has just a great feel a great sound and it's like solid it's so solid it, it it's like this is probably the most i would say the most well-built camera i've ever carried and held that goes for old cameras and new cameras combined but listen to this oh, it's so smooth it's just and then listen Oh, that shutter. Here we go. Just incredible. There's like nothing at all to advancing the film lever, the, the advanced lever on this. I mean, it's so buttery smooth and just feels incredible. And it's just, it's just that tactile feel and that, that sound. It just makes for an extremely pleasant uh, shooting experience and the size of it. it this is actually a pretty small uh, size camera. Uh, I mean, it's no Minox, but it's very, very, I mean, I don't have very big hands. I mean, it's, I would say it's very similar to the size of my uh, Fujika ft6 uh, 5n i don't know whatever it is um uh, like the older fuji slr film cameras and fuji's today they're they're always they generally are a smaller camera i'd say it's about the same size as that weighs about the same but the feel of it the quality of it feels just so much better yeah a very cool camera so I have a little bit of a video for you. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my footage from my test roll, which is just running uh, Ilford HP5. I did go out and do some shooting with, with some Lomo Purple, um, but that didn't quite turn out the way that I thought it would. And the reason for that, I think, is more in my development. Yeah, I'm kind of new to doing C41 developing in my basement and I get mixed results with it. Yeah, just really soft, even though I know that, that, that things are in focus and it's just not coming out right. Um, uh, wasn't sure if it was my scanning. So I tested that and it's not my scanning. It's definitely, uh, something in, in my developing. It could be the unicolor that I'm using. Maybe I did something wrong when mixing it. Um, I wanted the Cinestill C41 kit, but I just couldn't get it at the time. So I might just order one of those up and give that a shot and see if there's a difference in 
the quality of my C41 developing. Because I really, truthfully, I really only want to do C41 with my 120 film, just because I don't have anywhere local that does uh, color or black and white 120 film. It's only 35 millimeter and it's only color and black and white has to be sent out and it generally takes about two weeks or so to get it back and it's just a pain in the ass. I'd rather just do it myself. So anyhow, um, enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you in the next one. This is gonna be about it for the POV and test roll footage. So I don't wanna bore you too much more. So here is some photos using the Lomo purple or Lomography purple. And like I said, they just didn't come out right in the development and they're just heaping piles of crap. But I figured I'd show you anyway. So enjoy. It, it is a sharp lens, it is a sharp camera camera runs fantastic and flawlessly and I absolutely love it just need to do something better with my development process anyway enjoy and I'll catch you in the next one